I love Ultimate Castle 9, and I think it's an underrated game. However, unlike some of the other Fire Answer Freddy's games, there isn't a video talking about how the game works in detail, besides one of Manax's videos, but in that video he mainly focused on the history of the 50-20 mode. So in this video, I'm going to explain in detail everything you need to know about this game, how every single character works, and how to deal with them the most effectively. Just note that this information was taken from both outside sources and my own personal experience in the game. I will link all the places I got information from in the description, so all out of the way, let's get right into it. Let's start with the office layout and general rules for Ultimate Custom Night. Nights last for 4 minutes and 30 seconds, with each hour lasting 45 seconds. The game runs at 60 frames per second, so use that to determine how fast certain characters move when we start getting into the code. You have a camera system with 3 different systems attached to it, which I will get into later. You have a Freddy Fazbear mask like from Fire at the Freddy's 2, and you have three extra meters to pay attention to. The power, which works the same as Fire Answer Freddy's 1. Certain actions like closing doors will lower the power, and if the power is at 0%, you are left unable to defend yourself. The temperature mechanic affects certain characters' behaviors, such as faster movement and causing certain characters to spawn. The lowest the temperature can be on a normal night is 60 degrees, and the highest it can be is 120 degrees. You also have a noise meter, which can be increased by a number of factors. In your office, you have access to a flashlight, which you can use by pressing Z. The office has six office openings that you can interact with. A door on each side of the room, which you can close with A for the left side and D for the right side. A vent at the top of the room in the center, which you can close with W. A vent on the bottom right side, which you can close with F. And two duct openings from each side at the top. As I said before, on the monitor, there are three different systems. The camera system, the vent system, and the duct system. I'll start with the duct system. The ducts can be sealed in the camera, but it can only be sealed one at a time, which you do by clicking on the side you want to be closed with the sealed duct button. In the duct, there is also an audio lure, which you can use by clicking anywhere on the line. Characters in the ducts will appear as hazard signs, with the character of the hazard sign indicating which character it is. Next, we will talk about the vent system. In the vent, you can use a vent snare on any one of the three openings, which you can use by clicking on the opening you want to use it on. Though, like the duct, you can only block one opening at a time. Characters in the vent will appear as the sprite of their face, although it's very hard to see for some characters. Finally, the camera system. The camera system is laid out as the Five Nights at Freddy's one location, although some rooms are very different, such as a second curtain for Funtime Foxy and a prize counter instead of the show stage. Flipping through different cameras, icons such as Faz Coins can appear on the monitor, which you can collect by hovering your mouse over them. On the prize counter, you can use Faz Coins to purchase different items, most notably the Death Coin, an item that allows you to disable a character from the night. Note that only certain characters can be disabled throughout the night using the Death Coin, which I will highlight later on as we go into the characters, and the Death Coin can only be used once per night. I'll also add that you can gain Faz Coins by successfully blocking door and vent animatronics. You also have access to various tools which are visible on the monitor and are hotkeyed 1 to 6 respectfully. The power generator activated with the 1 key lowers your power usage but creates a ton of noise. Silent ventilation activated by using the 2 key lowers the noise and slows the rate of the heat increase. The heater turned on with the 3 key increases your temperature rapidly and also repels duct characters and glitches Rockstar Freddy. Power AC does the opposite, lowers the temperature using the 4 key. The 5 key activates the global music box, which can be used to soothe Chica, Lefty and the puppet, as it winds the music box up. The 6 key just turns everything off. Spacebar toggles the fan on and off. In your office you also have a wet floor sign, where clicking on it changes the side of the room it's on. This is used for Rockstar Chica. When characters like Scrap Baby and Rockstar Freddy are activated, a shock button and a pay 5 coins button will appear for them when needed, otherwise they are not present. Before you start a night, you can choose to activate one of four different power-ups. You can use multiple power-ups at once. The battery, which starts the night off with 102% power rather than 100%. The DD Repel, which prevents DD from spawning. However, it should be noted that DD Repel does not stop XOR from spawning on 5020 mode, so it should never be used then. The Frigid power-up starts the office at 50 degrees rather than 60 degrees, and the 3 coins power-up starts the night with 3 fast coins rather than none. Some extra mechanics to mention. There are two major mechanics called camera stalling and office stalling. Camera stalling is when an animatronic is held in place by their camera being selected. Certain characters can't kill you while being camera stalled, such as the plushies. Being camera stalled only prevents them from killing you while their camera is selected, however. Office stalling is when an animatronic is unable to enter the room and kill you unless you raise the monitor, which is helpful for a lot of the characters. 
Speaking of which, it's time we get into how all the characters work. Freddy will approach your office from the left door, and you're meant to keep track of him on the camera. On 20 difficulty, he can take about 30 to 45 seconds to reach your left door, moving through four different stages, taking about 10 seconds per movement. If the office gets too hot, this goes from 10 seconds per movement to about 5 seconds per movement. To stop Freddy, you need to shut the left door once he makes his fourth movement, where he will be right outside the door. If Freddy is blocked by the left door, you will hear a thud and he will go back to the end of the hallway. The formula for his progress game is AI level plus temperature negative 60 over 5, causing him to not only progress faster when his AI level is higher, but also as the office heats up. His visual stage changes every 100 progress. He will be able to attack and be blocked by the door once he reaches 400 progress. At 500 progress, he will attack whenever the monitor is up with the left door open. The most effective way to deal with Freddy is to shut the left door every time you're about to open the camera and open it back up once you hear a thud since Freddy can only attack when the camera is flipped up, aka office stalled. Freddy cannot be camera stalled. Freddy cannot be disabled using the death coin. Bonnie shares pirate code with Foxy and will block out your camera screens if you look at him while he is peeping through the curtain, although you can still interact with the cameras and see Faz coins. There is a small figure on your desk which will either be of Foxy or Bonnie depending on who is in the curtain. The idea is to look at Pirate Cove when it's Foxy and not when it's Bonnie. Bonnie's figure being on the desk will stall Foxy from moving unless he is already signed to come into your office. Bonnie can be disabled using the death coin. Chica will be hanging out in the kitchen and will bang her pots and pans around and will come and attack the player when she gets tired of the selection playing from the music box, in which her pots and pans sound will stop playing. This can happen on a 15 second interval where the game will check either the music box is playing or if the music has changed. If you miss two 15 second intervals, she will get angry. When she gets angry and is on her way to attack, she has a 20% chance every half second interval to kill you when the monitor is up. There are a number of ways to deal with Chica. When her pots and pans stop, you have a small amount of time to change the music box from the kitchen camera. However, if you change the music box while her pots and pans are playing, you will be jump scared. If the puppet is active, turning the global music on up for 15 second intervals will stall Chica and you will stall her from attacking, as long as you don't view the kitchen camera. This is the easiest way to deal with Chica and the go-to strategy for Chica on 5020 runs. Despite her being in the same room as the puppet, she is not disabled by the death coin, even if the puppet is active. Foxy, like in the first game, hides in Pirate Cove and will slowly make his way out of the cove to your office if you don't check on him regularly. He progresses through four stages with the code working like this. Every frame, Foxy progresses 1 plus H, with H meaning how many stages he has progressed since you last checked him on the camera. This will cap out at 3. Once his progress reaches 1000, take away 10 times his current AI level, he has a 66% chance to progress to the next stage, although if he is observed on the camera while this happens, he will be stalled. Once he makes it out, he will start to assemble himself in your office piece by piece. Once in the office, he has a 10% chance to kill you every time the monitor is flipped. Foxy will only attempt to leave Pirate Coves when his figure is on the desk, so keeping Bonnie's figure on the desk for as long as possible is the best strat for 5020 runs as runners can't check on Foxy while using the Cam 2 stalling strat. Otherwise, the best way to deal with Foxy is to check on him when his figure is on the desk and flip the camera and keep checking until Bonnie appears on the desk, in which case Foxy will be stalled. There is also a trick known as a zero frame cam flip where the camera can flip up the monitor in a way that tricks the game into swapping figures on the desk while not tricking any other event that normally happens when you flip cams. Foxy can be disabled using the death coin. Toy Freddy will be playing Five Nights at Mr. Hugs in the parts and service room, and you basically need to play the game for him, pressing the button on the camera that Mr. Hugs is on. Doing so prevents Mr. Hugs from jump scaring Toy Freddy, although if you don't, Toy Freddy will kill you as well for not helping him and letting him loose. With Toy Freddy, we can actually learn a bit more about the coding behind him, and it pretty much goes like this. Every 10 seconds, if Mr. Hugs is at a closed door, the game will roll a random number between 0 and 29. If this number is less than Toy Freddy's AI level, he will move to a new camera. If the camera is not being viewed during this roll, Mr. Hugs will automatically fail and not move. However, if Mr. Hugs remain at an open door for about 15 to 17 seconds, then he will jump scare Toy Freddy and from there, Toy Freddy has a 10% chance to attack every 0.5 second interval that the camera is up. Because of the RNG factor in his behaviour, on most 50-20 runs, Players tend to just try and flip the camera up as quick as possible while spending as minimal time in the cameras as possible to prevent Toy Freddy from ever having a chance to jump scare the player. Otherwise, you need to make sure that you constantly check on Toy Freddy to make sure Mr. Hugs doesn't jump scare him. Toy Freddy can be disabled using the death coin. 
Toy Chica behaves much like she does in Five Nights at Freddy's 2, sneaking into your office and you need to put on the Freddy Fazbear mask to fool her into leaving. She attacks on 14 second intervals and she leaves quicker than Toy Bonnie. Her code works like this. Every 14 seconds, the game rolls a random number between 0 and 59. If this number is less than her current AI level, she will enter the office from the left side, causing the lights to flicker and the droning sound from the original Final Fantasy Freddy's 2 game to play. Every frame that the mask is on, a value that we shall call the go away value, will increase by 1, or 2 if Toy Chica is being directly looked at. Additionally, go away starts at a random value between 0 and 99 whenever she appears. Once go away reaches 200, she will leave. If she's in the office for more than 300 frames and about 5 seconds and you don't have the mask on, she will attack. Toy Chica gives you a large amount of time to put the mask on and you shouldn't die to her as long as you put the mask on before she's able to make it to the center of the room. Toy Chica cannot be disabled using the death coin. Toy Bonnie works exactly the same as Toy Chica, including his coding, except that he moves on 15 second intervals rather than 14 second intervals. He also moves slower and takes a bit longer to leave than Toy Chica. Once again, he is really easy to deal with, just put the mask on before we get to the center of the room. Toy Bonnie cannot be disabled using the death coin. Mangle is our first vent character that we will be talking about. They will crawl through the vents and attempt to get into your office. They can be blocked by the vent snare. Mangle's speed through the vents starts at a value of 3, and then raises by their AI level divided by 2 equals 1 every 6 seconds, except when they reach a corner, where the starting value is decreased to 1. If they make it to your vent opening, they will never leave and instead wait for the player to leave the vent open to enter the office. Once inside, they will hang from the ceiling and wait for the player to flip up the monitor, in which case they have a 1 in 30 chance to kill the player every second that the monitor is up. The best way to deal with Mangle is to just close the vent opening every time you flip the monitor to prevent them from entering at all. Having them enter through the vent will also create a noise disturbance. Mangle cannot be disabled using the death coin. Balloon Boy and JJ work the same except for what they do once they actually enter the office. They will both attempt to enter from the side vent when your monitor is up. Specifically, the game will choose a random number between 1 and 30. If this number is less than their AI level, one of them will appear in the side vent. From there, they will enter the office after about 2 to 10 seconds depending on their AI level if not blocked by the vent door. Balloon Boy will disable your flashlight for about 10 seconds, while JJ will disable your doors for about 8.3 seconds. The best way to deal with them is to close the side vent every time that you are planning on being in the camera for more than 2 seconds, which mainly is the case set to the start of the night. Otherwise, just be quick in the camera and close the side vent when you see one of them there. Both BB and JJ cannot be disabled using the death coin. Wither Chica is another one of the characters who crawl through the vent towards your office. She takes a set path, always working towards the furthest vent path. She starts at a speed of 6, which is set to 1 every time she turns a corner and then is set back to a set speed every 6 seconds. This set speed is determined by her AI level divided by 2 plus 1. If she runs into the vent snare, she will be set back to the start of the path. She will also do this if the vent door is closed on her. If the camera is flipped and the vent door is left open when she's ready to attack, she will attempt to enter but will get stuck in the vent. This will prevent all vent animatronics except for Mangle from entering the office. However, every time that the monitor is flipped, she has a 1 in 15 chance to break free and kill you. Deal with her the same way all vent animatronics are dealt with. Close the top vent before you flip cams, or put a vent snare on the furthest path since she will always take it and will never be able to enter. She cannot be disabled using the death coin. With it, Bonnie, like Toy Bonnie and Toy Chica, can enter the office on 13 second intervals if the monitor is raised. He picks a number between 0 and 29 and compares it to his AI level, and if it's less than his AI, then he will enter. To deal with him, you need to put the mask on. While the mask is on, he has a 1 in 30 chance to leave every frame. After 60 frames, this doubles to 1 in 15 chance. If he's in the office for more than 4.1 seconds to 2.83 seconds depending on his AI level without the mask being on, he will attack. This is determined using 250 divided by his AI level times 4. Best way to deal with him is to leave the camera and put the mask on the second you hear the buzzing ambience as Toy Bonnie and Toy Chica have. Toy Bonnie cannot be disabled using the death coin. The puppet works the same as he does in Five Nights at Freddy's 2, being dealt using the music box. He is located in the kitchen along with Chica. When the night starts, the music box will start at 100 units. The puppet will drain this number down based on AI level divided by 10 plus 1 every second the music box is not wound, roughly taking 90.9 to 33.3 seconds to fully drain based on his current AI level. 
If this number reaches zero, he will play his Pop Goes the Weasel song. The ventilation will drain more quickly, and every time the monitor is raised, he has a 33% chance to attack. He can be dealt with by either widening the music box manually on the kitchen camera, which rises by 10 units every second, or by the global music box, which rises by 5 units every second. Using the global mu music box after he escapes slows him down for a few seconds. The best strat is to sync winding the music box with Chica on 15 second intervals so you can wind the box while soothing Chica and Lefty. He can be disabled using the Death Coin. Withered Golden Freddy works the same as he did in Five Nights at Freddy's 2, with him having a chance of appearing in the office every time the monitor is flipped up. The game picks a random number between 1 and 40 and if that number is lower than his AI level, he will enter the office. When he appears, the player has between 79 to 60 frames depending on his AI to either put the mask on or flip the monitor up again. If successful, he will disappear immediately, otherwise he will attack. Easy way to deal with him is to put the mask on every time you lower the monitor. Golden Freddy can be disabled using the Death Coin, but if you do it on AI level 1, you will get the secret Fredbear jump scare. Springtrap crawls through the vent at the same speed with the same formula as Withered Chica. He ignores the vent snare and when he gets to the vent opening, you will see him through the top of the vent. If you raise the monitor, he will jump scare you, and if you close the vent, he will be sent back. He won't enter if with the Chico is blocking the way. Deal with him the same as everyone else, close the vent door every time you lift the monitor. He cannot be disabled using the death coin. Phantom Mangle is a distraction character who can't kill you. Every time you lift the monitor, the game runs a random number between 1 and 59. If this game is less than the AI level, Phantom Mangle will appear on the cams. If you stare at him for more than 50 frames, he will force you out of the cams and enter the office, causing a noise disturbance of 1 to sound for 6.3 seconds to 10 seconds, depending on the AI level. To avoid them, either switch to a new camera, select a new camera system, or lower the monitor. They cannot be disabled using the death coin. Phantom Freddy is another distraction character like Phantom Mangle and can't kill you. Instead, they jump scare you if they fully materialize in the office. When the night starts, Phantom Freddy's fade value starts at 255. Every 0.25 seconds, this number will decrease by AI level divided by 5 plus 1. If the office gets to 120 degrees, this value will decrease by 1 every 0.05 seconds. Once this number reaches 0, Phantom Freddy will jump scare the player, causes a blackout, allowing any top vent animatronics ready to attack to enter. After attacking, his fade value will start at 1000. If the flashlight is used on him, his fade value is increased by 5 every frame, maxing up to 400. He cannot be disabled using the death coin. Phantom BB works the exact same as Phantom Mangle for appearing on the cams. If viewed for more than 100 takeaway AI level times 2, he will jump scare you. He doesn't let top vent animatronics in, but it does black out your screen and force your monitor down. Deal with him the same as Phantom Mangle. And no, he can't be disabled using the death coin. Nightmare Freddy works the same as he does in Five Nights at Freddy's 4, with the Freddles constantly spawning until he kills you. Every second the monitor is flipped up, the game will choose a random number between 0 and 29, and if this number is less than the AI level, a Freddle will spawn. Up to 5 Freddles can spawn visually, but 7 need to spawn for Nightmare Freddy to appear. Once this number is reached, Nightmare Freddy will jump scare you if you have the monitor up. To combat this, you need to shine your flashlight on the Freddles, who have a 5% chance to disappear every single frame, unless there are more than 3, and then this number raises to 10%. You can shine the flashlight even if the camera is up. Nightmare Freddy cannot be disabled using the death coin. I'm going to talk about all three plush animatronics, Nightmare Bonnie, Nightmare Mangle, and Nightmare Circus Baby at the same time, as they all require you to buy their plushie at the prize counter within 20 seconds of when they appear. The price of the plush depends on their AI level. AI level 1 to 9 it costs 10 FAS coins, AI level 10 to 19 costs 15 FAS coins, and AI level 20 costs 20 FAS coins. All three animatronics can be cam restored by viewing them on camera too. However, you must stay on this cam for the rest of the night or you will be killed once a 20 second grace period is up. None of the plushies can be disabled using the death coin. Both Nightmare Fredbear and Nightmare work exactly the same, except Nightmare Fredbear comes from the left and Nightmare appears from the right. Every 5 seconds that the monitor is raised, the game will run a random number from 0 to 40, and if the number is less than the AI level, they will appear at the door along with a laugh sound effect, panned to the side of the room they are at. If you don't shut the door within 2 to 5 seconds of them laughing, they will jump scare you when the monitor is up. Neither can be disabled with the death coin. Jacko Chica is the first animatronic who is directly affected by the temperature. When the office gets to 90 degrees or higher, her manifest level starts to increase by AI level times 2 for every second the office remains at 90 or over. Once her manifest level gets to 500, which takes anywhere from 4 minutes and 10 seconds to 12.5 seconds depending on her air level, she will attack. If the office is below 100 degrees, shutting both doors will decrease her manifest value by 10 every frame down to a minimum of negative 50. Over 100 degrees, closing the doors will do nothing. Keeping the office below 90 degrees is the best way to avoid any interaction of Jacko Chica. She cannot be disabled using the death coin. 
Nightmare Ion is the only animatronic affected by your mouse placement. He picks one of six spots, four spots in the middle of the room, and two in the upper left corner. He picks a spot every second until a player touches him with the mouse. For every frame that the mouse cursor is on his body, starting from a value of 255, this number will decrease by AI level divided by 5 plus 1. Once this number reaches 0, which can take anywhere from 3.55 seconds to 0.85 seconds depending on his AI, he will be fully visible and attack. Every frame that the mouse has leaves his body, this value will increase by 1. Placing your mouse in the lower left and lower right corners is the best way to avoid him, as well as being very quick with the mouse and paying attention to your surroundings. He cannot be disabled with the death coin. Nightmare Balloon Boy is actually very simple. He picks a random number from 0 to 40 every time that the monitor is flipped. If his AI level is below that number, he will sit up. If you flip the monitor without flashing him with the flashlight, he will jump scare you. He will also jump scare you if you flash him when he is slumped over. He cannot be disabled using the death coin. Below that will pick a number from 0 to 39 every 14 seconds, and if that number is less than her AI level, she will approach from one of the two doors. She will play her song which is panned based on which side of the room she's approaching from. After 100 frames of her attack, the office lights will begin to flicker, and after 170 frames, or 2.6 seconds for after her attack, she will jump scare the player. She's quite easy to hear and to shut the door for, but sometimes her song is drowned out by louder sounds, so staying focused is essential. She cannot be disabled using the death coin. Funtime Foxy is the only character whose AI level does nothing to affect their difficulty. AI level 1 is just as hard as AI level 20. From the front of Funtime Foxy's curtain, there is a time from 1am to 9am showing what time their showtime is. If this number is from 1am to 6am, the player must be looking at cam 6 on the exact moment the clock hits that time. Each in-game hour lasts for 45 seconds. So for 1am, it's 45 seconds, at 2am, it's 1 minute and 30 seconds, etc. These are all the times that Funtime Foxy needs to be viewed on based on the hour. Funtime Foxy will select a random hour from 1am to 3am to start the night. After every successful showtime visit, they will increase by an extra 1 to 3 hours. You also must show up to a 6am showtime or you will die right as the night was meant to end, unless they were being camera stalled. Funtime Foxy can be disabled using the death coin, which is the usual strat for 50-20. Enid is another vent character, however he is very hard to see on the vent camera, only appearing for about 20 frames each movement, which is set to AI level divided by 2 plus 1. He has a starting speed of 1, and this is increased by 5 every time he turns a corner. He cannot be stopped by the vent snare, however he will make a squeaking noise when he is ready to attack. If the monitor is flipped while the vent door is open, he will attack, otherwise he is set back to the start. Deal with him the same as all the other vent animatronics, and he cannot be disabled using the death coin. If I'm being honest, I'm not going into trash in the Kang's code. There's a lot of different factors, but considering these guys are literally just distraction characters, all you need to know is they have the same 0 to 29 system everyone else does. Also, the crate has a 50% chance every 3 seconds to jump scare you when they start whispering in like the bottom of your office. And yeah, no, you can't death coin them. Every time that the monitor is raised, Helpy picks a random number between 0 and 40. And if it's less than his AI level, he will appear somewhere around the desk in your office. If he is not clicked for more than 500 takeaway AI times 5, he will jump scare the player and make a large air horn noise, which adds a large amount of irritation if Music Man is active. Just click on him when he appears and send him away. Be careful if Nightmare Ion is active as he likes to stand in front of him. He can't be death coined. Ned Bear is the fastest of the duct animatronics. He is fooled by the audio lure 50% of the time. Every time that the heater is activated, he has a 2% chance every frame to be pushed back. Every 0.85 seconds, he has a chance to move one step closer to your office, determined by the game rolling a random number between 0 and 29 and comparing it to his AI level. If it's less than his AI level, then he will move. Once he makes it to an open duct, every time that the monitor is flipped up, he has a 50% chance every half second to kill you. The best way to deal with him is to activate the heater before you flip up the monitor. He can't be death coined. Mr. Hippo works exactly the same as Ned Bear, except that he is fooled by the audio lure 100% of the time. He also moves every 0.95 seconds, but moves the same way and attacks the same way. Placing the audio lure in the middle left of the open vent on the left side is the easiest way to deal with him. Also, to save time, just know that none of the duct animatronics can be death coined, but Mr. Hippo is the only one who will give you a 10 minute speech. Pig Patch works exactly the same as Mr. Hippo, except that he moves every 0.9 seconds. Happy Frog works the same as Pig Patch, but moves every whole second and is immune to the heater. However, she is fooled 100% of the time by the audio lure. Orville is the most difficult of the duct animatronics because he is only fooled by the audio lure 10% of the time. Otherwise, he works exactly the same as Pig Patch. Rockstar Freddy will be on the right side of the office sleeping when you start the night, and when activated, will demand some cash. 
Every 30 seconds, the game will choose a random number between 0 and 29. If this number is less than his AR level, he will activate when the monitor is next lowered, and ask for 5 fast coins. He will politely ask 5 times every 3 seconds, and then impatiently 3 more times every 3 seconds, and then simply 3 deposit another 3 times before his patient runs out any attacks, for a total of 33 seconds to collect the, requ the required amount of coins and pay him before he attacks. There is a 1 out of 3 chance that his voice will glitch out every 250 milliseconds, which is raised to 2 thirds while the heater is on, which can be used to trick him if you don't have money. He cannot be death coined. Rockstar Bonnie can appear in your office on every single 13 second interval when the monitor is raised. The game picks a random number between 0 and 29, and yeah, you know what this means by now. Once he appears, he will only leave once his guitar has been found and double clicked. The guitar can appear on the left hand sides of cams 1, 2, 6, and 8. After 900 frames, the light at the office will start to go out, and if his guitar isn't clicked by 1000 frames, he will kill you. The best way to deal with him is just to not be on cameras on the 13 second intervals. He can be removed using the death coin. Rockstar Chica is the only animatronic affected by the wet floor sign. Every 10 seconds the monitor is down, she does the same 0 to 29 calculation with her AR and when successful, will pick one of the two doors to enter from at a random 50-50 chance. After 900 frames, she will attempt to enter the office when the camera is raised. If the door is closed but the wet floor sign is not in front of that door, she will stay and not move. If the wet floor sign is down, she will not enter and instead respawn. She can also be camera stalled, which is best to apply on cam 2, as this cam stalls the plushes as well. The best strat is to cam stall on cam 2 and have the wet floor sign on the left, so she can never enter. She can't be death coined. Rockstar Foxy is the only character who will always be active regardless of his AI level. He is also the only character who will help you throughout the night. Every now and then the bird can spawn, determined by a random number from 0 to 39, which if it's greater than Foxy's AI plus 10, the bird will spawn. The main effect of his AI comes in his helpfulness to the player. When the bird is clicked, the game rolls a random number between 0 to 62 and then adds Rockstar Foxy's AI times 2. If this number is 60 or less, he will provide one of the four buffs, a 1% power increase, cool the office down to 60 degrees, soundproof the room for 30 seconds, or give you 10 Faz coins. If this number is over 60, however, he will kill you. He cannot be death coined. Funtime Chica is simple. She follows the 0 to 29th formula, which runs every 35 seconds. If successful, she flashes the screen for about 3 to 8 seconds, depending on her AI level. No, she can't be death coined. L chip works the same way as Funtime Chica, except that it runs every 10 seconds, and you can either press enter or click the skip button to get rid of him. This also makes a noise level of 2. Music Man is one of the more interesting characters, working off an irritation meter. This value of irritation starts at 0, and any type of noise will add to this meter. He gains 1 plus AI level divided by 5 irritation every 20 milliseconds the noise bar is at 2, an example is having the power gen on. If the noise value is about 3, he will gain this every single frame. Helpy's jump scare adds 2,500 to this value. His simple crashing will start at 5,000 irritation. He will crash every 3 seconds until he reaches 6,500 irritation, where he will crash every 2 seconds. Above 8,000 irritation, he will crash every single second, and once he hits 10,000 irritation, he jump scares you. He will lose 1 level of irritation every frame the noise level is at 1, and 5 levels every frame the noise is at 2. Contrary to popular belief, the global music box has absolutely no effect on him. Just keep your noise down when he starts crashing to avoid him. He can't be death coined. Scrap Baby can enter the office every time the monitor is raised on 5 second intervals via the 0 to 29 calculation. Once she enters, the game does the same calculation for her entering the office. If she's successful, she will raise her head and is able to attack. Once in this phase, she will roll a random number between 0 and 99 every frame that the monitor is up, and if this number is less than her AR level, she will kill you. When she is raising her head, shocking her with the shock panel will cause her to vanish the next time that the monitor is raised. She only attempts to attack once a night. The shock panel can be used with no consequence of death as much as you want, but each use drains 1% of power each time, so be careful. She can't be death coined. Molten Freddy works exactly the same as Enid, except his starting speed is 8 and he is visible on the vent cam. When he's ready to attack, he will laugh. Deal with him like everyone else in the vent. And no, he can't be death coined. Arguably the most controversial character in this game, Afton is the only character who can kill you from the side vent. Every 29 second interval, Afton has about a 25% chance to attempt an attack. When he does, the lights will flicker and a banging sound effect will play. The player has 2 to 1 second to close the side vent or he will jump scare you. He only attempts to attack once a night, and he can't be death coined. Lefty is probably one of the more unique characters in this game. He works off a similar irritation meter that Music Man does, but he is affected by noise and heat. He arguably has the most confusing code, but it goes like this. The game runs the 0 to 99 AI level calculation every frame that he could be irritated. 
Whenever there is more than one bar of noise in the office, it will add the difference of one and the current noise level of every frame. Example, three noise take away one equals two irritation. If the building is warmer than 80 degrees, one irritation is added every frame. If this gets to 100, this goes up by two every frame. At every 300 irritation, he progresses a visual stage on cam three. Once he reaches 1,800 irritation or more, he will attack on one second intervals when the cams are up. Lefty can be camera stalled on cam three. Lefty is soothed by the global music box. With every frame the box is on, his irritation is reduced by one and will block any irritation gain. It takes about 30 seconds to completely soothe Lefty. If Lefty is visible on the cams, he can be disabled with the death coin. Old Man Consequences is actually surprisingly interesting compared to his mechanic. Every five seconds, the game runs the zero to 29 system. If successful, his mini game will appear. Press C when the fish is in the cross to win the game. The player has 250 minus AI level times five frames to do this, or the monitor will be locked for 300 plus AI level times 10 frames. Surprisingly, mashing C to try and win his minigame can result in you being locked out automatically. Phone Guy can appear every 20 seconds via the 0 to 29 calculation. When he appears, he adds one noise value. From there, you have about four and a half seconds to hit the mute phone call button, or the noise value of one will stick around throughout the Phone Guy's phone calls. After one minute, there's a 50% chance that he will hang up early. And that's all the main characters from Ultimate Castle Knight explained as in-depth as we possibly could go. However, there are still the six secret characters to go through, which I guess we can speedrun. Shadow Bonnie, when spawned, causes the office to go pitch black for 10 seconds, making you unable to see if doors are open or closed. Plus Trap will appear on the chair on cam 6 and will disappear if the camera is viewed for about 2 to 3 seconds. Failure to do this on an average of 15 seconds will cause a jump scare. Nightmare Chica's jaws will appear on the screen when she spawned in. The player needs to turn on the power AC to send her back. If her jaws fully closed, she kills you. Bonnet will randomly try to streak across the office, making a sound cue as she does so, and the player will need to click on her nose before she leaves the screen or she jump scares you. Mini Venus will appear on the screen, blocking the player's vision for 45 seconds or one in-game hour when spawned in. Last animatronic is Lowellbit. When summoned, her message will pop up and add a noise level of 3 until LOL is typed. And that is every single Ultimate Cast Night mechanic and character behavior explained in as much detail as I could put into this video. I won't go into detail about strategies on how to beat the challenge modes. If you are interested, check out Ambience. He makes great tutorial videos. If you enjoyed this video and you want me to make similar videos on the other games, please let me know. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and have a great day.